Hello, this is David D. Hilser, a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. No, I'm not talking about flat earthers, climate change deniers, or Trump. I'm talking about the Big Bang, relativity, play tectonics, particle physics, quantum mechanics, anything fundamental to physics or cosmology. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who have been working outside the mainstream for decades who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure to click below on the subscribe button, the little bell next to it, and you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Hey, sorry, got a hoarse voice. We did some, <coughs> got a cold, and we did some samba last night. Hey, bye 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 And of course, um, I probably yelled more than I should have. Anyways, we're gonna talk about today, um, uh, again, if you are a science woke newbie, where do you start? Um, well, we'll talk about just that problem. Uh, it's a very good question. Why? Because we have really for decades, we've only catered to the advanced science woke crowd. You know, PhDs and from MIT and uh, scientists who've been thinking and working on this for many years. Uh, we have even people who uh, have are professors in physics and have written books and hundreds of papers in this subjects. And it can get really technical real fast. You know, we have our own lingo and everything. And that is not always good and easy for somebody who wants to be science woke who's not been around that for a long time. Um, so there's a lot of technical papers that are very intimidating. And I'm gonna talk to you about some um, exactly about that at the end so stay tuned to the end of this video um we need to change that that is we in the cmps and we critical thinkers uh we need to change that the science woke pe people we have to realize there are people who want to be science woke who are just starting out and they're not in this for very long they just started so what can we do now well let's take a look what you can do now well it ain't a whole lot but I put together a list here, which I think would be uh, pretty interesting for the person just starting out. What I what I would find easy to understand and would get you into something pretty quickly. I think one of the best things, if not the best thing, to look at is Neil Adams' video videos on the growing universe or the expanding Earth, as some people call it. Why? Because. It is so shocking when you see that all the, the entire globe, all the continents fit together on a smaller orb. It's not just the same radius and things swimming around, but they all fit together. The chances of that is like like, like 96 quadrillion or sextillion. Uh, we have somebody who has actually figured that out in Facebook uh, and made, put some numbers to it. So it's absolutely astronomical. So the chances of that, that all the continents fit on a smaller orb, uh, if you just take away the seafloor bed, um, that's quite amazing and its implications are great because if you really understand that and it doesn't take too long it took me only a couple of minutes to understand that um, the implications were fantastic uh, it means the earth's expanding that's something extremely different and in the, and actually massing mass has been increasing it's not just the earth's expanding it's getting extra mass where's that from it's subatomic particles most likely oh yeah some comes from outer space but it's not enough and most of the the science woke people and critical thinkers today believe it's really coming from uh, atoms being blowing apart, blown apart. Their particles coming in at the, in this case, what I think is at the South Pole. Some people say the South Pole and the North Pole, and it gets recombined and you get more mass. And you, if you read Stephen Hurl's book, look him up in Dinosaurs and the Expanding Earth. You want it? That is a great. You don't have to have almost any technical knowledge if you like science and can read just general numbers. It's a great read, and it tells you why um, he says, and he states that, in fact, the uh, Earth has been gaining mass because when the dinosaurs were around, it was ha the gravity was at half of what it is today, and that's why they could survive, because they couldn't survive today. They'd be big blobs on the beach. Put a whale on the beach, how long does he survive? Not very long. And they've survived because they're underwater, and it's sort of like weightlessness there. You put dinosaurs, huge dinosaurs, on land, they'd all die. He talks all about it. It's a great book, great read. I recommend it for the newbie. And the reason, again, I recommend expanding growing earth is because the implications are huge. The data and the um, convincing you that this is true isn't that hard. You got great visuals from Neil Adams, really entertaining, and you have Stephen Hurl's book, and that's a great place to start. You can also watch my uh, um, documentary, Einstein, Wrong the Miracle Year. 
it's actually a human story first before it is about the technical side of Einstein being wrong. It's about our family and, his, and a journey uh, that I took my mom to meet all these scientists, but we also journeyed our family along the way, and it's a great and touching story with great original music, it even has a music video. And what's that music video? Oh, our family kidnaps um, Stephen Hawking. So that should get your interest. And uh, we, you also can read uh, articles and blogs on the CMPS website. You can go to naturalphilosophy.org and click on blogs. Now you're going to find some that you can understand, and you're going to find some that you won't understand so much. But there are a lot of them there, and the idea is we're trying to write them more for the layman. And uh, it's not as easy, but uh, we have those. We have Friday now. I have Friday Q&A with Dissident Dave, and you can ask me any questions and I will be happy to answer them. A lot of times, again, I, I have to realize that we have a lot of new people who are new to being science woke. And of course, we have the Dissident Science YouTube channel videos, which you can sort of go through and find some of them. A lot of them aren't real, real technical. So uh, those are some of the places you can go today. Coming in the future, sciencewoke.org. If you go there now, you'll see a splash page with a nice logo and everything. And that's where we're going to do all the stuff for the newbies of Science Woke, where we're going to show you the mainstream, the flaws in mainstream. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see my first video for newbies, science newbies, take a look right up here, and you, I talk about all the problems in mainstream science. Uh, so if you don't know those exist, <coughs> excuse me, I still have my cold. <coughs> And Chappelle University, we're putting that together. We already have three courses we're looking at. One of them I'm going to be writing, which is going to be an overview of dissident science. So you can take a course in that. So you can come out of it knowing about how dis the history of dissident scientists and what's going on today, that kind of whole thing. It's going to take a little while, and but we'll get there. We also, I'm trying to make more dissident science beginners videos. So that's what this one is about. And we have a super secret project for millions of people to make them science work. But guess what? We're not ready for them. So don't ask me. Yes, it's already there. I've pitched the concept because this is like a Hollywood pitch, literally. And I think it could be absolutely amazing. But we need to be ready. We have to get the science woke. The uh, Chappelle University, uh, University Chappelle. Um, so uh, University touch Chappelle. University.nashphilosophy.org. I'm going crazy. Um, so, uh, yeah, those uh, are coming in the future. But the truth is, we are not ready for the masses, just like I said, because I always get ahead of myself, put them down, and i got to remember, read the, read the darn slides, Dave. You won't go off on tangents, but al although a lot of people say my tangents get them thinking, so, and then other people, it annoys them, but, you know to each their own. We need to fill in our current plan and structures. So that's what I just said too. We need to get our Science Woke uh, um, uh, website going. We gotta get our university website going. And uh, this is new for us. Um, trying to explain this to, to people who are just not been in this. We, you know, we've been old, really catering to those people who've been working outside the mainstream with their own theories and models. That's what we've been catering to. And um, we're now finding out with things like this, uh, what I was finding with my chats with people, my friends around me at parties and stuff, they enjoyed listening to me ramble on. I figured, well, maybe I'll make a YouTube channel and voila, I got like a couple thousand subscribers in a year. That's pretty good and it's growing uh, quite nicely. And I thank all you subscribers for staying in here and enjoying this. And of course, uh, one thing uh, I will talk about, and this is actually a good topic for another newbie, is, and this is something I am starting to tell people, we are in a paradigm shift. This is something I've sort of came to the realization in a, in a um, much more concrete way in my own head, that what a paradigm shift comes from Thomas Kuhn. He's a philosopher, don't worry about it. He wrote about, he coined that term, I believe. And the idea is that when, when science gets to a point where it can't go any further, I'll give an example. When we had the Earth as the center of the solar system and we had to make clocks that made Mars go in loops while all the stars and the other things just, you know, sort of orbited around us, you know, uh, the, mathema the mathematics, but the mechanics of describing that were just got to be impossible and it became, uh, uh, how do you say, almost religious-like and they were lost and things started getting crazy. These are kinds of things that happens in paradigm, 
paradigm shifts. And the paradigm, of course, then moved the center of the solar system over to the sun. And that system is a lot saner to calculate and understand. Well, we are in the same place. And why we're, why we're in that, I'm going to have a, a, a upcoming video on that and I'll tell you all about it. So um, I don't have, I can't point up here because we don't have the video yet. Or maybe we do and you're watching this later on. So if, do check it out, uh, the paradigm shift. Um, and in summary here, my advice to science woke newbies, uh, and this is going to be a short one today, and I promised you, you got to jump in. You, you, you can't be, in, don't be intimidated. You can't be intimidated. Um, remember that if it is complicated and paradoxical, it is, it is not too hard, like they say. It's, it's simply wrong. This is something I'm saying. Our science today is com complex and paradoxical. We're in a paradigm shift. And when you get to that place, the reason it's complex and paradoxical is because it's wrong. If you come up, if you go up to an engineer at SpaceX or whatever uh, a space company you go to and say, you know, uh, I've got I've got this idea for the rocket to make it better. It's paradoxical. It's a it's got a paradox in it. But let's go forward with it. You won't. Uh, it's really complicated. It ain't gonna work. Complicated and paradoxical don't hit it in the engineering world, and it shouldn't be make be any part of the current uh, physics and cosmology world, but it is, and that's why I say we're in a place where we need to shift to new models and new theories, and that's why this exists, and that's what Science Woke is, and that's what Critical Thinkers, and that's what Natural Philosophy uh, is. So, and the last thing is use common sense. Believe it or not, common sense and your gut feeling on red flags when you see things like uh, the fabric of space-time, and you think to yourself, they never tell you what it is. You are right. And remember, don't take my word for it. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I am Dave DeHoser. I'm your science therapist. I am going to make you science woke. Ciao for now.